Hi, Nick Houston here for Gotham Sound and Communications. I'm here with Paul Isaacs and Sound Devices. Yep. Uh, at NAB 2018. Good to see you, Paul. Good to see you too, Nick. And uh, so we're here, we've got the Mix Pre 6, we know that, but then I see this Sennheiser microphone in the back, the Ambio. What's, uh, what's going on here? Very recognizable, isn't it? It is. So yeah, what we're showing here is um, a beta of upcoming so uh, firmware, which will be available in the summer, of our support for Ambisonics and at the Sennheiser Ambio. Um, we are part of the Sennheiser Ambio partnership and we've been, been working with them very closely. And what we're showing here is the beta of some firmware. So what this will enable us to do is to record the uh, A format coming out of the microphone either directly as A format raw to yeah. four embers, or we can convert that to B format, which is this, the most common standard used in a 360 audio production workflow. So, and we, we support both B format standards, FUMA and Ambix. Um, now, we are unique in the fact that in terms of monitoring this on set, you can in real time decode that A or B format coming from the Ambio mic to left, right stereo or binaural. There's no other field recorder that can actually allow you to monitor binaurally. So that should give you the, the ability to really monitor the full 360 space at capture time. And that can be really beneficial because it can help you make correct decisions in terms of mic placement, in terms of also checking that you've plugged in your mic in the correct way. But on set, that's crucial to have that ability. So um, we, it's really easy to use. We've made it as easy to use in just like all the other features of the yeah. Mix Pre series. Yeah, so show me how that works. So, We've got this new menu, you go to the menu here, and then the, in the inputs menu, you'll see this new menu called Ambisonics. And here, you've got two, mo two uh, uh, parameters to adjust. The mic position or orientation, so you can select whether the mic is up, down, or end fire. End fire literally means horizontal. That's Sennheiser's term. And it's very important you choose the right mic position, because if you don't, then the the converter, the A to B format converter, will not make sense of it. It'll do it back. Put things in the wrong yeah. place. Yeah. So that's what the mic position does. And then the mode determines how you want to record that signal. Um, so we've got A to B format, Ambix, which takes that signal, the A, the A format signal coming directly off the capsules of the mic and records that, converts that to B format, dub W, Y, Z, X, which is the Ambix standard. Uh -huh. We also have A to B format FUMA, which is WXYZ. It's just an interchange of the channels between FUMA and Ambix, but we support both standards. Don't ask me why there's two standards. I really don't know. I've got to find that out. I will find that out. Um, and then you have um, A direct. So if you want to capture the um, A format direct without any processing, you can. And post production might prefer that so that they do the B format conversion instead. If you want to save time in post, you can convert to B format here. There's a second page where you can also record B direct. So some ambisonics mics, like the sound field mics, they actually output B format. They've already done the conversion. So we can record that direct without any processing. So we provide all those modes. Um, and then in terms of the headphone monitoring, you can come back to our headphone monitoring menu here, touch the headphone icon. We've got two ways to monitor, either stereo or binaural. We call that 3D, but that just means you're getting the full um, sphere of sound. Okay, so yeah, that's the Ambio feature set available later this summer. Okay, got it, so a couple months from now. Yeah, and that will be free. That'll be a free firmware update. Amazing, so if you're looking to do virtual reality using an ambisonic microphone, this the Mix is Pre 6 is, would be the way to go. No, a very small, form factor product, great mic preamps with great analog limiters on. So, you know, if you're overdriving this, you know that the limiters are gonna really help to prevent that digital distortion. Um, all the benefits of the Cashmere mic pre. And there's some other updates becoming available for the Mix Pre line. Uh, and we'll talk about the Mix Pre 10M in a minute, but tell me a little bit about what's gonna be on the so, six and the three. Version 2.10 firmware, which is gonna be released this week. Uh -huh. This week? This week, in the matter of 
days. Uh -huh. It could even be this afternoon. Okay. But um, we're showing actually a beta of it here now, but it's very close to the shipping version. Um, version 2.10 introduces a couple of really nice features. One called Remix. And what that allows you to do is to take an existing recording and if the, the mix wasn't quite right, maybe one of the, the ISO tracks was noisy or maybe it was too low level or in the mix, or maybe there was a noisy uh, lapel mic or something like that, you have now the option to remix that. So you can go into remix mode, you can then select that take, any previous take you recorded from your file list, and then hit playback and dynamically adjust the mix and recreate that mix. Um, you might want to pull down a noisy mic or you might want to boost a, uh, some talent in that take that was a bit too low level and recreate that mix. So that's great to be able to, because you don't always, or sometimes you forget to even arm the mix tracks. So now you can actually go, oh, I'm saved, I can now create that mix. And that, there's always some takes which you're not quite happy with and you want to pr produce a better mix. So the production sound mixer now has the opportunity to do that. And it's not even just about the fader level control they have, they can also adjust the pans as well. And they can mute um, tracks as well. And is that recording a whole new file or is that? Well, so you obviously just have the ability to remix without even re-recording anything. So it'll be, yeah. oh. So you can just remix and not, re do, you can just set so it'll it. just take, take away the old mix track and add two channels. Right. So what you do, if you want to actually record that new mix and you can, um, do that mix dynamically during recording. Yeah. You don't have to set a fixed level and that's it. You can, it's almost like going back in time and yeah. mixing on set. You have the ability to select that take and for instance here, if I go into the file list and select any take here, I can go into the edit menu and select re-record left, right. Amazing. And then it, as soon as I hit that button, it goes into record and you're, you're mixing it again. The file name of that remix track will take the same name as the original source file, but add a prefix to it, R underscore, so you know exactly what a take you were remixing. And it'll, so there you go. Cool. So that's one of the key features. Another really nice feature is we've added Q marker support. Um, For playback. You can add Q marks during record or playback um, and navigate to them during playback. So. We've never had a product that enabled us to do that. The, the 7 Series did have Q markers. You could lay them, but you could never na navigate uh -huh. to them. But we can do more than just navigate to them. We can now we can name those Q markers, so give them a, a, a descriptive name. We can move them in tenth of a second steps. So if you didn't quite lay that Q mark at the right place, you can you tweak can it a little it, bit. Tweak it. Yeah. And you can delete Q markers as well. So move, name, delete, and add during record and playback. The Q markers are stored in metadata within the um, IXML chunk and the Q chunk so that um, software apps can use those Q markers too. Um, and two of the common apps that will work are Reaper and Adobe Audition. Awesome. There will be others too. So that's the Q markers. Another really nice feature which is going to really suit surround type applications is we've expanded the linking options. Now obviously with the Ambio it's a straightforward one through four or if you're using the 10 you can also do five through eight. But now we have the option to link any number of channels. So on the 10 you can link one through three, one through four, one through five, one through six, one through seven, one through eight. Oh, wow. and you can even link five through seven. So you can have groups of different, you can run two groups simultaneously of different configurations of mics. And along with that, we've added a link type menu, which allows you to decide what you want to link in that group, whether it's just the faders or whether it's all parameters, okay? In the case of an Ambio, you do want to link all the parameters, but if you're using like a, a pair of mismatched mics, then you'd want to um, um, do, um, you'd want to sort of be able to set trims differently. And so you'd set faders only mode, and then you can set the trims independently and even low cuts independently. So they're the three key features of version 2.10. There's a whole bunch of just improvements to the UI navigation, so it's gonna feel a lot more fluid to some, to some users. And we just made a whole bunch of under the hood 
uh, improvements and enhancements as well. So it's just going to feel a lot better to some of our existing users. Awesome.